My next guest is from Stratford PEI originally and has played her fair share of professional hockey all over the world, including this past season uh, here locally in Toronto with the Toronto Six of the NWHL. It's Sarah Steele. Sarah, thank you for taking a few minutes to chat. No worries. Thanks for having me. You have been all over the world at this point uh, playing hockey. It's, it's incredible to see Sarah kind of right back at the beginning, uh, girl from PEI, getting the opportunity to play at a prep school, you played at Appleby College. Talk about that uh, about that journey and about how, how you ended up uh, out there. I grew up playing uh, minor hockey in Toronto. Not too many girls were playing hockey um, as I was growing up. So there wasn't many like competitive options for me just locally. So at the age of 15, I guess my parents and I decided that it was in my best interest to leave the island and seek out new opportunities. So that's kind of how I ended up at Appleby College. Um, they recruited me at uh, one of the local hockey camps uh, through Andrews Hockey. So at the age of 15, I left home and I kind of haven't been back since. So From Appleby College, you went on to, to BU, playing at Boston University. Uh, really story program in, in the NCAA. Talk about that process and about what the recruitment process was like because I chatted with a few other people uh, in this little series and they said how, how exciting it was and how fun it was to be exploring your options and, and doing what uh, what can be done to kind of further yourself, not just you know in hockey but uh, educationally as well. So I feel like the whole recruiting process um, in high school is a bit intimidating. At the time, I had actually been playing on two um, like high level elite team through Appleby. I was on their varsity team. And then I also played in the PWHL, uh, which is a junior league uh, for females in Ontario. So I had a lot on my plate when I was in high school. I was doing a lot of hockey, probably played about four games um, every week. I really had the opportunity to play on a large stage, um, just being on those two teams. Um, and I was fortunate to be on the national team my senior year of high school. So that really helped with the whole recruiting process, looking into colleges. I just kind of went on a few visits and went with my uh, gut or my intuition. And I really liked uh, Boston University. Um, obviously, they're really well known for their hockey programs on the men and women's side. And I really wanted to attend a school that was known for their um, academics. So yeah, BU just seemed like the perfect fit. Talk about what, what your time was like playing with them. You had a really long time career doing the whole four years there with them. I had a really awesome time at BU. I got to play with an amazing um, group of people. Um, as you may know, like Mary Phillips Quinn played there, Victoria Bach, a lot of high level players that are still playing for the national team and competing in the Olympic Games. So playing beside all those players um, and just uh, kind of living everyday life with them was definitely a surreal experience. I was just quickly browsing yeah, your elite prospects profile. Like I knew you had played in, internationally and had kind of traveled the world, but like I didn't realize to what extent, like you, you have been many places in a short time. And I think that's incredible, building up this incredibly impressive resume already. So, so, so talk about your experiences playing overseas and moving from place to different place and, and seeing so many different parts of the world through hockey. When I graduated from BU, I, I always knew that I wanted to travel. And the great thing about hockey was that it allowed me to do so in a capacity where like all my travel expenses and blending expenses were paid for. So it was really nice. I lived in three different European countries in Switzerland, um, Budapest and Vienna and Austria. So yeah, like you said, I kind of bounced around from team to team, but um, I kind of did that because I I wanted to see all these different cities and I don't think I would have really had the opportunity to do all that um, without hockey so yeah it was pretty amazing. Also browsing that uh, that Elite Prospects profile one of the things I noticed was competing internationally for Hungary like talk about that because <laughs> yeah. that is like how, do, how does that happen? I'm not really sure what to tell you there but playing for the Budapest team for some reason or another I was able to attend one of their Six Nations tournaments even though obviously I'm not a Hungarian citizen for some reason I was allowed to um, go and represent their team so I said why not and I, I uh, played with Team Hungary for a tournament um, obviously if I would have stayed there another year I probably could have played with their national team moving forward but I really wanted to return to Canada and yeah I was given the opportunity to play with Six this year. I want to get into the, the Toronto Six here because obviously the, the bubble in Lake Plaza didn't end the way that you maybe necessarily wanted, but talk about your experience 
in this uh, this atypical year playing for an inaugural franchise uh, in an up and coming league. It was definitely amazing, and I should say that I'm actually back in Toronto right now, uh, preparing for competing in the Isabel Cup final. I returned to PEI after the late Boston bubble kind of came crashing down, as he might say. Um, and I was home for about three weeks when I got the call to come back um, and start training and preparing uh, to compete in the finals. Um, so they've kind of pulled that together really quickly. And I think that just goes to show um, how organized and how professional uh, the league has been in dealing with these kind of situations. As you know, like there's been a lot of adversity that everyone has had to go, on, to go through um, during the COVID pandemic. So. Yeah, I'm just, I've been really proud to be a part of the Toronto Six organization and I'm still excited to see what um, we get to pull off uh, at the end of things, so. Obviously, like I, I didn't even realize you guys were getting back into the Isabel Cup Finals, so that's super exciting. Um, obviously, I would say that the year, kind of immediate goals probably are focused on the Isabel Cup, but uh, overall in in hockey and in, and in what's left in your career, what would you say your some of your goals are for yourself? My main goal kind of aligns with, I think, every other female professional hockey player, and that is growing the game in general um, and making sure that we create a league that is sustainable and allows other, other women to join in and, and make sure that they're able to make a living off of hockey um, and continue playing the game that we all love. For as, as rough of a year 2020 was, and, you know, 2021 hasn't gotten off the greatest of starts either. Um, if there's been a silver lining, it seems like, in a number of areas. One of the things in sports is we've really seen the growth of women's sports, whether it's uh, soccer, uh, whether it's been basketball, and hockey in particular, is kind of seems like it's been really growing in leaps and bounds over the past year, despite everything that's been going on worldwide. What does it mean for you to see the game of the women's hockey game growing at a rate that it is uh, for yourself, you know, you're kind of mid-career, you're kind of hitting that prime, as some people might say. What does it mean for you? I mean, even coming back to Canada um, last spring, I wasn't even sure if I would have an opportunity to continue playing hockey at the professional level. Um, so like you said, I feel like there's been a lot of substantial uh, monumental things that we've kind of uh, achieved in the, just the past year, which has been incredibly amazing just given the circumstances with the pandemic. and. I know a lot of leagues are suffering right now, so just the fact that we've been able to pull off so much um, in these hard times, it's been truly incredible. Well, Sarah, I wish you all of the best with the Isabel Cup. I think it's, it's incredible to see that the league is forging forward and making sure this happens and making sure that a winner gets crowned because uh, it's really important. I think that uh, seeing the success of the NWHL and how far you guys have come in leaps and bounds, uh, especially this year, is, is so incredible to see. So best of luck with that. And uh, do you have anything that you want to promote? Any, any you know, Toronto Six stuff you want to promote? Any Isabel Cup stuff, NWHL? Anything you want to shout out here? Yeah, I guess I just hope that everyone is cheering for the only Canadian team in NWHL. And we really appreciate everyone's support. I know we received like 1.4 million uh, views on our Twitch feed for one game. So we've definitely been feeling all the support that we get back home. And I hope that all the young girls back on the island are watching our games when they're aired. For any, anybody who wants to check out NWA Jaw Games, they do have a fantastic live Twitch stream. Whenever the Isabel Cup final gets underway, make sure you check that out. Sarah, thank you so much for taking a few minutes here and uh, all the best uh, in the near future. No problem, thanks for having me.